ونستعينه ونستغفره ونتوب إليه ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا أن يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلله فلا هادي له نشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد أن محمد عبده ورسوله أما بعد all praises due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We praise Him, we seek His aid, we ask His forgiveness. We repent to Him and we rely on Him. We seek refuge in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from the evil of our souls and our deeds. He whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has guided, no one can misguide. And he whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has not guided, no one can guide. I bear witness that there is no deity worthy of worship but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I bear witness that the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is his final messenger. يقول الله تعالى في كتابه العزيز أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم يا أيها الذين آمنوا اذكروا نعمة الله عليكم إذ جاءتكم جنود فأرسلنا عليهم ريحا وجنودا لم تروها وكان الله بما تعملون بصيرا إذ جاءكم من فوقكم ومن أسفل منكم وإذ زاغت الأبصار وبلغت القلوب الحناجر وتظنون بالله الظنون هنالك ابتلي المؤمنون وزلزلوا زلزالا شديدا وإذ يقول المنافقون والذين في قلوبهم مرض ما وعدنا الله ورسوله إلا غرورا as always, brothers and sisters, we begin by thanking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for blessing us once again to witness this blessed day of Jum'ah. We thank Him for allowing us to turn to Him in sincere repentance on this blessed day. We thank Him subhanahu wa ta'ala for all of His bounties those things that we recognize and appreciate and those things that we don't. We thank him subhanahu wa ta'ala for he's the one that is only deserving of thanks subhanahu wa ta'ala. Today brothers and sisters I wanted to share with you a few verses from Surah 33 Surah Al-Ahzab and the theme is lessons from the battle of the ditch or al khandaq The verses that I shared with you are verses uh, 9 
through 12. The surah itself is a very rich surah which, with many, uh, many themes and many lessons to be learned and I urge all of you today, inshallah, you go home to read the surah. Allah Most High in verse 9 says, A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitanir Rajeem. Believers, remember Allah's grace on you when forces came upon you and we sent a wind against them and forces you did not see. For Allah sees whatever you do. When they came on you from above you and below you, your eyes dimmed and your hearts were in your throats and you imagined conceptions of Allah. There, the believers were tired, shaken by, vi by a violent shock. Yet the hypocrites and those with sickness in, the, sickness in their hearts say, Allah and the Messenger have promised us nothing but an illusion. For those of us who are, are familiar and those of us who are not familiar with battle of the ditch or the trenches which occurred approximately the fifth year after the migration of the Prophet ﷺ to Medina and it was a trying experience for everyone prior to this encounter with Quraysh Prophet ﷺ and the believers had two prior incidences. One was the Battle of Badr, and the other was the Battle of Uhud. There are several things that I uh, would like to highlight today, things that I feel are important for us to. Uh, understand and hopefully inshallah benefit from. At the time the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam because of the nature of what occurred consulted with his companions with regards to how to defend themselves. Now, the Muslims were on the defensive, as they always were. Prophet ﷺ had an agreement with <coughs> some of the inhabitants of Medina. He had an agreement of non-aggression with the Jewish tribes that resided in Medina. And as we all know, he also had to contend with certain elements that professed Islam, but in reality, they were against the Prophet ﷺ. So it is said that some of these individuals, because of their displeasure with the Prophet ﷺ and the believers, decided to go to Mecca and recruit or encourage Quraysh to attack the believers and they were successful but not only were they successful in recruiting Quraysh, Quraysh after failing twice to achieve their goal of doing away with the Prophet ﷺ and the Muslims, they were able to recruit others to help in this conquest. So, when you read Surah Al-Ahzab, or the word Ahzab basically translates to confederates. And this is a reference not only to Quraysh, but the other tribes that also joined in, in addition to Sina al and his companions were not only contending with Quraysh in this outside force, they had to contend with 
those people who are plotting and planning inside from within and often that those individuals were unknown meaning it wasn't clear which side everybody was on what I want to share with you today and hopefully inshallah we can I can give you uh, a clear picture of what the Prophet ﷺ and the believers were up against so you have this invasion in addition to these individuals who were residing in Medina who often engaged with the Prophet ﷺ and his companions as if they were with them they said the same things they came to the masjid and they prayed they did everything that everybody else did but in reality they had hatred in their hearts for Allah and his messenger so as I said the Prophet ﷺ consulted as he always did with his companions with regards to what to do how to best defend Medina and there were many suggestions <coughs> but the Prophet ﷺ decided to go with a, a, a suggestion made by Salman al-Farisi Salman al-Farisi or Salman the Persian the great companion and his suggestion was that the Muslims the Muslim should stay put meaning they should not leave the city limits understanding that there is an enemy within in addition to the risk of being exposed losing their homes you're already struggling when you left Mecca you already left with nothing so the Prophet ﷺ took his suggestion and his suggestion was to dig trenches wherever there were entrances into the city so they eliminated the threat of this invasion so Quraysh came came to Medina many forces in the thousands and they came with the intention of eliminating the Prophet ﷺ and the believers and putting an end to this however once they reached the city limits they had no way of getting in and it is said that the believers were surrounded for approximately a month but I was trying to figure out how to get across these uh, these ditches and they couldn't now a month is a long time now, I want you to consider that if Philadelphia for example were cut off from all access for a month what would our supermarkets look like what would your kitchen look like? What would your refrigerator look like? You to consider that as we move forward. There was no access outside of Medina. So there was nothing coming in. So in addition to the Muslims being on high alert, in addition to that, they also had to contend with hunger so not only were there was there this uncertainty they had to contend with hunger and in addition to the hunger they also had to contend with extremely cold weather 
When we read these verses and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala begins this dialogue by addressing the believers. Ya ayu alladheena amanu thkuru ni'mat Allahi alaykum. Would you think about this? Think about the language. He started by reminding the believers that even though you were afraid, you were cold, and you were hungry, hunger like you can't imagine, people were starving, he still referred to their condition as them being what? Blessed. He started out by reminding them, Ya ayuhal ladheena amanu thkuru ni'mat Allahi alaykum. Remember my blessings. Remember that I blessed you even though you were cold, you were afraid, and you were hungry. But you were still blessed. Allah blessed you with Islam, He blessed you with security, even though you couldn't see it at the, at the time. And He goes on to narrate to them what happened. And He tells them, He reminds them of these Confederates coming. And Him doing his work. And he reminds them, إِذْ جَاءُوكُمْ مِنْ فَوْقِكُمْ وَمِنْ أَسْفَلَ مِنْكُمْ They came to you from above you and below you. Above you is Quraysh and those people who were out there, the invaders. وَمِنْ أَسْفَلَ مِنْكُمْ are those people who were within. The hypocrites and those other people. وَإِذْ زَاغَتِ الْأَبْصَارُ وَبَلَغَتِ الْقُلُوبُ الْحَنَاجِرَ وَتَظُنُّونَ بِاللَّهِ الظُّنُونَ That you reached a point where some of you didn't think you were going to make it. You were scared out of your mind to the point where your hearts were in your throats. And you started to doubt that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was going to come to your aid. I'm going to share with you a hadith or an athar correction. This is a report by Hudayfa bin Yaman, great companion. A man once came to him and he said to him, he asked him about the nature, this is a tabi'i, this is not a companion that came to him. Second generation came to Hudayfa bin Yaman. And he asked him about the nature of the companion's relationship with the Prophet ﷺ. How were you guys with him? Hudayf ibn al-Yaman replied by saying that we did our best. This is humility. You'll understand in a minute why he said we did our best. So the man proceeds to say, well, if I were back then with the Prophet ﷺ, me and the rest of us here, we would not allow the Prophet's feet to touch the ground. We would carry him everywhere. We would honor him in this way. <coughs> so Hudayf al Yaman says, well, let me tell you about the incident of al Khandaq. And he goes on to narrate how the Muslims had reached a point the night where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent that, that great sandstorm. He said the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was engaged in prayer. Everybody's on post, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is praying. He would pray and after he prayed he turned around and he spoke to his companions. He asked for someone to volunteer 
This is during the storm. Ask for someone to volunteer to go see what's going on with the invaders. He asked once. Hurday from Ben Yaman said, not one man budged. No one responded, no one stood, no one, no one said anything. Prophet got up again, started praying again. Prayed for a while. Finished his prayer, turned around again. Made the same request. Someone get up and go see what's going on with the invaders. Again, no one budged. No one said a word. And they said, Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi got up again, prayed again. Finished his prayer, turned around again, made the same request. This time, he, the Prophet added that he would ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the person that volunteers that he be his companion on the, uh, in Jannah. No one budged. Nobody responded. Finally, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Hudayfa, go and see what's going on with the invaders. Hudayfa ibn Yaman said, you know what? I had no choice. Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam called me out by name. I had no choice but to respond. So Hudayfa ibn Yaman gets up and he goes and he finds out what's going on with the invaders and he comes back and there's more to this hadith. I'm sharing this with you because when you read the verse in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says هُنَالِكَ بْتُلِيَ الْمُؤْمِنُونَ وَزُلْزِلُوا زِلْزَالًا شَدِيدًا Can any of you ever imagine the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam asking one of his companions to get up and do something and nobody says anything. Nobody even budges. That's how bad it was. That's how afraid they were. That's how, that's how much they were shaken. <clears throat> to that degree, not one person that the Prophet ﷺ had to tell somebody, Fulan, Hudayfa, go do this. They didn't know what was going on. What contributed to the chaos and the confusion is the enemy within. People were swearing, saying things, talking smack, creating doubt. Now, for us, reading these verses, brothers and sisters, I, all you can say is subhanallah. We are truly blessed. We are, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has truly blessed us. Regardless of what it is that I'm going through, however big I may think it is, how I may think will it ever end, Will I ever get through this? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is always with you. Those brothers thought that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, some of them had the doubt that we don't know what's going on. To the point where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَإِذْ يَقُولُ الْمُنَافِقُونَ وَالَّذِينَ فِي قُلُوبِهِمْ مَرَضَانِ That the hypocrites and some of those who had the sickness in their heart. What does that mean? وَإِذْ يَقُولُ الْمُنَافِقُونَ We know who the hypocrites are. We're not even touching that because that's like, we're not doing that. What I'm more concerned with is وَالَّذِينَ فِي قُلُوبِهِمْ مَرَضٌ Those who have sickness in their heart. Meaning that they have doubt about their faith. 
They're on the fringes. They're weak. Someone can say something, something to them and easily persuade them. Talk, the, talk to them about all kinds of stuff and they'll, they'll just go. They don't have enough, strong enough faith to stand their ground, to stand on their faith. So you had people like that. Everybody wasn't a hypocrite and everybody wasn't grounded like that. And that's the reality. The other point here is that when you read this, you understand that companions were human beings. They were here, you see the humanity. You see the humanity. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about them being afraid. That's real. But he reminded them that they were blessed. And I'm reminding myself, brothers and sisters, and I'm reminding you that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has truly blessed us. We look around our lives, how, how, whatever our condition is. Allah has blessed us. Wherever we are in our lives, Allah has blessed us. Because we still have an opportunity. He's always with us. He's always present. He's always there. وَهُوَ مَعَكُمْ أَيْنَ مَا كُنْتُمْ He's always there. He's always present. If I turn to Him, He's there for me. That's all I have to do. All I have to do is turn to him. Things are tough, turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. A lot of us, things are tough and, and you know, when we're weak in faith, we don't turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we turn to other things. Sometimes we turn to people. Instead of praying, I'm talking to fulan and fulan about my problems. Instead of dua being the first order of business, turning to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, asking him for direction and guidance. And it happens, and it happens often. So when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَإِذْ يَقُلُوا الْمُنَافِقُونَ وَالَّذِينَ فِي قُلُوبِهِمْ مَرَضُونَ I want you to remember that because that's real. And often that's something that we struggle with. And I'm not saying individually. Some of us struggle with that. Some of us are unsure. And if you're unsure, as your brother, I'm making dua for you. I'm praying to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he remove that doubt, that doubt from your heart. If you're confused, I'm there offering you sincere advice, not talking down to you. There are many lessons, brothers and, and sisters, to be learned from this surah. From the entire surah, but particularly from this incident, there are many lessons to be learned. But there are a few things that I wanted to point out. One is, for those of us who are familiar with Salman and Farisi, if a person says that name, you automatically make the connection between him and what? The trench. Because that was his suggestion and that is his greatest contribution to the protection of Islam. That's his greatest contribution. That's what everybody remembers him for. Although he's done a lot of great, great things. But he's remembered for that. So when I look at this, I ask myself, what is my contribution going to be? When I'm long gone, what is my contribution going to be? My, my contribution to Islam, what is my contribution going to be? And I want you to think about that.
This is something that I, I, I really want us to start thinking about because all of the companions contributed to Islam in one way or another. What is my contribution going to be? Two, consider your life, where you're at, where you've been, the point to where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has brought you today. What you're going through today, where you could be, what you don't have to deal with, what he has blessed you with subhanahu wa ta'ala, even if things are bad and even if you're struggling, if you're physically struggling, if you're struggling in your faith, in your iman, you're still good because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is always there. Three. <clears throat> when we reflect on where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks of those who have illness in their heart. And this is something, inshallah, moving forward, it's a conversation that I really feel that we need to have. Sometimes we have the tendency to contribute to promoting false norms. By that I mean we do things in the name of Islam and it becomes what we do and what we accept. We have a mindset that may not necessarily be in line with what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is calling us to and is in com complete contradiction with our core values as Muslims. We have core values in Islam. You read the Quran, it's all there for you, spelled out. It's not something that a person has to try to figure out. But sometimes we're too lenient on things. And it becomes, those habits become a norm. And we let things go. And it's okay, mashallah. The danger in that is that it becomes an expectation. It becomes an expectation. Oh, Fulan did such and such. Oh, that can't be our attitude. The more we accept it, younger generation coming up, they see that, that's the norm. That's the standard. Islam's standard is up here. We have to do our best to uphold that standard, not establish another one based on where we're at in our faith and our weaknesses. We're not strong enough to speak up. And I have to speak up even if, it's, even if it's against myself. This is what we're supposed to do. And this is part, is a major part of our faith. We love. The, the, the Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in his infinite wisdom reminds believers that the standard is up here. And when you are working diligently to maintain this standard, you're the best. But when you're not, you cannot claim glory and you have, you're not working to uphold that. I can't quickly quote, Kuntum khayra ummatin ukhrijat lin nas, and I'm not trying to uphold this, this, I'm not trying to uphold the standard. So when I see things happening around me, I can't close, turn a blind eye to what's going on. I can't remain silent and my believing brothers and sisters are out of line. I can't do that. But then claim glory. I can't do that. That's not something that I can do. Part of our faith is that we are supposed to try to uphold 
virtue. I'm supposed to try to uphold decency. And when I see behavior that contradicts that, I at least have to say something about it. I have to demonstrate that I'm not part of that. I'm not part of that. I'm not in agreement with that. If we don't do that, we will have, and I believe today we already have a lot of things where we let things slide. And because we let things slide, it, it's become an expectation. This is, this is expected. You reach a certain age, you have sex out of marriage, it's okay. You reach a certain age, it's, that's an expect. I expect you to do that. And I chalk it up to you're young and you don't understand. Because we, we have this attitude as if, you know, a lot of people are under pressure. A lot of people, so a lot of people are trying to figure it out. When you have a movement in this country by other religious groups where they're, try, they're promoting abstinence, we're absent from that conversation. So when I speak of us endorsing certain behaviors, if I'm not speaking up against what's going on in our communities, and I'm speaking of Muslims, I'm not speaking of community at large, I'm talking about people that say, La ilaha illallah, Muhammad Rasulullah, born Muslim, raised Muslim, blah, 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 the whole nine yards. For us, maintaining the standard is a communal obligation. We should be locked in ours. <coughs> That's unacceptable. We're not doing that. We're not accepting that behavior. And that's just an example. So what I'm saying, brothers and sisters, is that we have to be extremely careful of what we let go. A lot of times we don't know. A lot of times it's unintentional. We don't, we, and, and you know, only Allah, 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 Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows. But we have to be extremely careful. We have to be extremely careful that we're not playing the role of the whisperer. We read these verses from Surah Al Hazab. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes it clear. You read the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes it clear. Muslims have to be support for one another. I have to look out for you. I expect, my expectation is that you're looking out for me. When I say that, I'm not just talking about, you know, you're safe and all. I'm talking about Muslims, the development of our community, where we're at, where we can be. We want to make, make sure that I'm not the person that is discouraging others from rolling up their sleeves. Because truthfully, brothers and sisters, as we all know, many things have happened since 9-11. And every time some nonsense jumps off, guess what? People are interested in Islam, they're seeking out the Quran, and they are accepting Islam in spite of the actions of the, of the Muslims. In spite of, and a lot of times we like to, to adopt that, that's us, that's not us, that's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's not us, that's him subhanahu wa ta'ala, this is his deen. This is his deen. We can't take credit for any of that. He guides and he allows others to remain astray. We cannot claim credit for that. But what we don't want to do is we don't want to be those individuals who are talking people out of doing things. Going back to Salman al-Farisi. Salman al-Farisi radiallahu anhu, that was his contribution. And all of the believer, believers contributed. And people that talked against Islam and the Muslims like that 
created, creating doubt and whether or not we're, we're, we're trying to, all that stuff. Those people were, again, you're suspect. We cannot now, the, the norm cannot be that it's okay for me to just talk about it, just say stuff without accountability. And by, by without accountability, I mean us being accountable to one another. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is just. I cannot open my mouth and say anything that is not recorded. My body cannot move and do anything that is not recorded. Part of it has to be us keeping ourselves in check and the other part has to be us supporting one another. I want the best for my brother. I want the best for my community. I want the best for the Muslims. And that has to be our attitude. That was their attitude back then and people that didn't want the best for Islam, you're suspect. That doesn't necessarily mean that you are a hypocrite. That can also mean that you have issues with your faith. And when we do this introspection and we look at us and we look at our lives and how we're living, what we do and how we feel, we examine how we think, it's all, it has to all be on the table. Because none of us, not one of us, is safe from that. I'm not safe and you're not safe. Shaitan is always at work. Shaitan is always at work telling you all kinds of stuff. And I seek refuge in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from becoming a tool and an instrument of shaitan. Where I'm, you know, talking, talking some mess about other believers. I'm not interested in doing that. I pray Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect me from doing that. Sometimes, I, you know, we, we're human beings. We human beings make mistakes. And as I shared with you, the example of the companions, the Prophet calling on them, nobody responded. Humanity, brothers and sisters. Same standard that we have, that I have for myself, I have for you. I'm not going to have a higher standard for you than I have for my own self. And I pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we all treat each other like that. We view each other like that. That there's one standard. You are my brother. You are my sister. When I look in the mirror, I see you. I pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he allow us to benefit from his words. Because I can read the Quran and if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not bless me with insight, I'll come out with some, some wacky stuff. And that's not what I want. I want to read his book, maintain my connection, try my best to be sincere, and ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to guide me. أقول قبل هذا واستغفر الله العظيم لي ولكم ولسائر المسلمين والمسلمات من كل ذنب واستغفروه إنه غفور رحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على نبي الكريم وبعد in conclusion brothers and sisters I wanted to add a couple other uh, points of benefit, insha'Allah, from these, these verses. Going back to some of us who may be struggling. We know of individuals like this, or we're struggling ourselves. Remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's mercy. Remember that He is forgiving. Remember that He is <coughs> compassionate. Remember that He is ever present. We should encourage our brothers and sisters who may be wavering, who may be experiencing doubt. We have to reach out to them. We have to remind them. Our brothers and sisters that may be caught up, we have to remind them, we have to encourage them. Because everybody has an opportunity. And we have to remind each other of that. Individually, we have to remember Allah's mercy and His forgiveness. And we have to keep that at the forefront of our minds. A couple of weeks ago we talked about a verse, a couple of verses that are in this surah, in surah 33. When we talked about remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I call on myself and I call on you brothers and sisters that 
it become a habit, part of what we do, regardless of where we're at in our lives, that Allah's name is on our tongues. Regardless, if I'm messed up, jacked up, bottomed out, Allah is on my tongue. Even if I'm messed up, I'm confused, Allah is on my tongue. And by Allah is on my tongue, I'm remembering Him by saying, by calling on Him. And there's so much ease in that, brothers and sisters. Simply by calling Him by His name, Allah. When, when I, I'm struggling, Allah. When I'm hurting Allah, when I'm successful Allah, remembering Him subhanahu wa ta'ala and making that a habit that during my, time, during my day, at some point during my day, I'm remembering Him. If I'm not reading the Quran, I'm remembering Allah. If I'm struggling with my prayer, I'm still remembering Allah. Because if I'm not remembering Him and He's out of thought and mind, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and we conclude the khutbah every Friday with this. فَذْكُرُ اللَّهِ الْعَظِيمَ الْجَلِيلَ يَذْكُرْكُمْ You remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He will remember you. When you don't remember Him, you're an afterthought. You're an afterthought. Remember Him regardless of your state. Remember Him. If you're not right and you're trying to get right, remember Him subhanahu wa ta'ala. And lastly, and I'll close with this as I do every time I give the khutbah and I remind myself and I remind you that before we leave this musalla today that we identify something that is beneficial to our souls that we're going to do for someone else that is unsolicited. Today, Yom al it's a blessed day. My good deeds are multiplied on this day. I understand that. I'm taking advantage of that, inshallah. Whatever it is, even if it's you seeing someone that you haven't seen in a while, smiling when you speak to them. Even if it's that. If you pick up a piece of trash off the ground, whatever it is, but do something for your soul. Islam is about service to others. And we have to remember that. That has to be in the forefront of our minds. Moving forward to this, this weekend, brothers and sisters, remember Allah. Weather's getting hot. Things are getting crazy, as we all know. When people are doing some interesting things, remember Allah. Remember Allah. And as you travel this weekend, again, make it a point to do some good. Whatever it is. Wherever it is. However you do it. Do it for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and do it for the sake of your soul. I pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he strengthen our faith that he give us the strength that we need in order for us to maintain and continue our struggle. Amen. I pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he forgive us for our shortcomings. Amen. I pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he accept from us our good deeds. Amen. I pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that when we turn to him in sincere repentance, that he forgives us, Amen. subhanahu wa ta'ala. I pray to him subhanahu wa ta'ala that when we return to him subhanahu wa ta'ala, that he make us amongst those who are close to him, that he make our scales heavy, that he eliminate and forgive and overlook and look beyond all of our sins. Amen. I pray to him subhanahu wa ta'ala that we are amongst those whom the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam will testify for on the day of judgment. Amen. ألا وصلوا على سيد المرسلين وإمام المتقين فقد أمركم الله بذلك في كتاب العزيز فقال جل من قائل إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي 
يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما ويقول عليه أفضل الصلاة والتسليم من صلى علي مرة صلى الله عليه بها عشرة اللهم صل وسلم وبارك وأنعم على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين وسلم تسليما كثيرا عباد الله إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعظكم لعلكم تذكرون فاذكروا الله العظيم الجليل يذكركم واشكروه على نعمه يزدكم ولا ذكر الله أكبر والله يعلم ما تصنعون وأقم الصلاة فإن الصلاة تنهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر Allahu Akbar Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim Maliki Yawmiddin Iyaka Na'budu Wa Iyaka Nasta'in Ihdina Sirat Wa Al-Mustaqim Sirat Al-Ladhina An-Namta Alayhim غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين تبارك الذي جعل في السماء برجا وجعل فيها سراجا وقمرا منيرا وهو الذي جعل الليل والنهار خلفة لمن أراد أن يذكر أو أراد شكورا وعباد الرحمن الذين يمشون على الأرض هونا وإذا خاطبهم الجاهلون قالوا سلاما والذين يبيتون لربهم سجدا وقياما والذين يقولون ربنا اصرف عنا عذاب جهنم إن عذابها كان غراما إنها ساءت مستقرا ومقاما والذين إذا أنفقوا لم يسرفوا ولم يقتروا وكان بين ذلك قواما والذين لا يدعون مع الله إلها آخر ولا يقتلون النفس التي حرم الله إلا بالحق ولا يزنون ومن يفعل ذلك يلقى أثاما ضاعف له العذاب يوم القيامة ويخلد فيه مهانا إلا من تاب وآمن وعمل عملا صالحا فأولئك فأولئك يبدل الله سيئاتهم حسنات وكان الله غفورا رحيما الله أكبر سمع الله لمن حمده الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الحمد لله رب العالمين 
الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين <تصفيق> صالحا فإنه يتوب إلى الله متابا والذين لا يشهدون الزور وإذا مروا باللغو مروا كراما والذين إذا ذكروا بآيات ربهم لم يخروا عليها صما وعميانا والذين يقولون ربنا هب لنا من أزواجنا وذرياتنا قرة أعين وجعلنا, وجعلنا للمتقين إماما أولئك يجزون الغرفة بما صبروا ويلقون فيها تحية وسلاما خالدين فيها حسنت مستقرا ومقاما قل ما يعبأ بكم ربي لولا دعاؤكم فقد كذبتم فسوف يكون لزاما الله أكبر سمع الله لمن حمده الله أكبر الله أكبر السلام عليكم ورحمة الله